Dust swirled in the dim light. The Willow Creek Library stood silent. Its shelves held secrets, stories whispered in the dark. No one dared to enter after sunset. Not anymore. The old building had a reputation. A chill ran down your spine just looking at it. The library was old, built in the 1800s. Its wooden shelves were warped and creaky. The air smelled musty, like old paper and forgotten time. Locals told tales of strange noises at night. They said the library was haunted. One window was boarded up. It was the only sign of damage, but it hinted at a dark past, a past that refused to stay buried. Sarah, the new librarian, wasn't superstitious. She didn't believe in ghosts. She accepted the job at Willow Creek without hesitation. The old library, with its eerie charm, intrigued her. Sarah loved books, their smell, their texture, the way they transported you to other worlds. She saw the library as a treasure chest waiting to be opened. She was determined to bring it back to life. On her first day, she started organizing the shelves. The silence was broken only by the sound of her own breathing. She felt a presence, watching her. But when she turned around, there was no one there. One evening, as Sarah was locking up, she heard a noise. It was a faint creaking sound coming from the back of the library. She froze, listening intently. The sound came again, this time closer. It seemed to be coming from the old wooden staircase that led to the attic. Sarah hesitated. The attic was strictly off limits. No one had been up there for years, but curiosity got the better of her. She slowly climbed the stairs, each step groaning under her weight. The air grew colder as she ascended. She felt a shiver run down her spine. She reached the top of the stairs and pushed open the attic door. The attic was dark and dusty. Cobwebs hung from every corner. Sarah fumbled for the light switch, but it didn't work. She took a step forward, her hand outstretched, feeling her way through the darkness. Suddenly, she felt it again. That strange presence, watching her, following her every move. She spun around, her heart racing. Hello? She called out, her voice trembling slightly. There was no answer, only the sound of her own breathing and the beating of her heart. But she could sense it was there. Something was in the attic with her. Section 5 the Whispering Books Sarah continued to explore the attic. She found stacks of old books, their pages yellowed with age. She picked up a leather-bound volume and blew off the dust. As she opened it, she heard a faint whisper. She paused, listening intently. The whisper came again, this time clearer. It seemed to be coming from the book itself. She couldn't make out the words, but it sounded like a woman's voice, filled with sadness and despair. She quickly closed the book, dropping it to the floor. Her heart was pounding in her chest. She backed away slowly, her eyes darting around the attic. She had to get out of there. Section 6. The Vanishing Cat The next day, Sarah decided to seek answers. She couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss, and her curiosity drove her to uncover the truth behind the strange occurrences at the library. She asked Mrs. Hawthorne, a kindly old woman who lived across the street, about the history of the library. Mrs. Hawthorne had lived in the neighborhood for decades and was known for her extensive knowledge of local lore. Mrs. Hawthorne told her about Elizabeth, a young woman who had died in a fire at the library many years ago. Elizabeth had been a librarian, passionate about her work, and loved by the community. The fire was a tragic accident that left a deep scar on the town. They say her spirit never left, Mrs. Hawthorne whispered, her eyes wide with fear. She leaned in closer, her voice barely audible, as if afraid the very walls might hear her. Elizabeth's spirit is said to be restless, searching for something she lost in the fire. They say she still haunts the library, searching for something she lost in the fire. Some believe it's a precious book, others think it might be a personal belonging, but no one knows for sure. The library has been a place of mystery ever since. That evening, Sarah brought her cat, Midnight, to the library. She had a hunch that Midnight's keen senses might help uncover whatever Elizabeth's spirit was searching for. The library was eerily quiet as they entered, the air thick with anticipation. She was locking up when she noticed Midnight staring intently at something in the shadows. His eyes were wide, and his fur stood on end, as if he sensed a presence that Sarah couldn't see. She felt a chill run down her spine, 
Before she could react, Midnight darted away, disappearing into the darkness. Sarah called out to him, her voice echoing through the empty library, but there was no response. Panic set in as she realized Midnight was gone. It was as if the shadows had swallowed him whole. Sarah stood frozen, her heart pounding in her chest. She knew she had to find Midnight, but the darkness seemed to close in around her, making her feel more alone than ever. The mystery of the vanishing cat had only just begun. Section 7. The Secret Room Determined to find Midnight and uncover the truth, Sarah returned to the attic. She had been here before, but this time, she was more prepared. The attic held secrets, and she was ready to unveil them. This time, she brought a flashlight. The darkness was no longer her enemy, it was merely an obstacle she was ready to overcome. As she shone the beam around the dusty space, she noticed something strange. The light cut through the shadows, revealing the hidden corners of the attic. There was a small, almost imperceptible bulge in the wall behind one of the bookshelves. It was subtle, but to Sarah's keen eyes, it was a glaring anomaly. She pushed the bookshelf aside, revealing a hidden door. The door was old, its wood worn, and its hinges rusty, but it was a door nonetheless. Her heart raced with a mixture of fear and excitement. This was it, the moment she had been waiting for, the moment that could change everything. This was the key to the mystery the key to understanding what had been hidden for so long. She took a deep breath and opened the door. The air was thick with dust, and the hinges creaked as the door swung open. Inside, she found a small, dusty room. The room was cloaked in shadows with cobwebs hanging from the ceiling and dust covering every surface. It was empty except for a single chair and a small wooden table. The furniture was old and worn, adding to the room's eerie atmosphere. On the table lay a dusty, leather-bound diary. The diary looked ancient, its pages yellowed with age, and its cover cracked and brittle. This diary held the secrets she had been searching for, the answers to the questions that had haunted her for so long. Section 8. The Diary of Elizabeth Sarah picked up the diary, her fingers trembling. It was Elizabeth's diary. The leather cover was worn, the pages yellowed with age. She could almost feel the weight of the years that had passed since Elizabeth had last written in it. She opened it and began to read. The first few pages were filled with the innocent musings of a young woman. Elizabeth's neat handwriting spoke of her daily routines, her favorite books, and the quiet joy she found in the library. Elizabeth's words painted a vivid picture of her life in the library. She described the smell of old books, the soft rustle of pages turning and the warm sunlight streaming through the windows. She wrote about her love of books, how they were her escape from the world. Each book was a new adventure, a new friend. Her secret hopes and dreams were laid bare on the pages. She dreamed of traveling the world, of finding true love, of making a difference. Then, the entries took a darker turn. The handwriting became more hurried, the words more frantic. Elizabeth wrote about strange noises at night, whispers that seemed to come from the walls, shadows moving in the corners of her vision, always just out of sight. She felt a constant, unnerving presence. She wrote about feeling like she was being watched, followed. Every creak of the floorboards, every flicker of the candlelight made her heart race. She wrote about her fear. It was a fear that grew with each passing day, consuming her thoughts and dreams. The last entry sent chills down Sarah's spine. Elizabeth's words were almost illegible, written in a frantic scrawl. Elizabeth wrote about a fire, a fire that seemed to come from nowhere, a fire that was consuming the library, turning her sanctuary into a hellish inferno. She wrote about being trapped, about her terror. The entry ended abruptly, leaving Sarah with a sense of dread and a thousand unanswered questions. Sarah closed the diary, her heart heavy. Elizabeth's story was one of joy and sorrow, of dreams and nightmares. It was a story that would stay with her forever. Section 9. The Tragic Fire Sarah's heart pounded as she pieced together the story. Elizabeth hadn't died in the fire. She had been trapped, left to die. The boarded-up window, the only sign of damage to the library, was a testament to her desperate attempt to escape. Sarah finally understood. Elizabeth wasn't a malevolent spirit. She was trapped, her soul unable to find peace. 
She wasn't searching for something she had lost in the fire. She was searching for someone to hear her story, to set her free. But what about Midnight? Where had he disappeared to? Section 10. The Release As Sarah thought about Elizabeth's story, she heard a soft meow. She turned and saw Midnight emerging from behind the chair. He rubbed against her leg, purring softly. Suddenly, Sarah understood. Midnight hadn't disappeared. He had led her to Elizabeth's diary, to her story. He was the bridge between the living and the dead, helping Elizabeth find her voice. Sarah closed her eyes and spoke to the empty room. Elizabeth, she whispered, I hear you. I know what happened. You're safe now. You can rest. A gentle breeze swept through the room, stirring the dust motes dancing in the air. The air felt lighter, the oppressive atmosphere lifting. Section 11. Peace at last. The next morning, Sarah returned to the attic. She carefully placed Elizabeth's diary in a place of honor on the shelf. The library felt different now, peaceful, the air no longer thick with unspoken words and lingering fear. The haunting was over. Elizabeth was finally at peace. And Sarah had a story to tell, a story about a young woman, a library, and a cat who helped a lost soul find its way home.